So whenever we're installing a GPS unit, we like to take an ion meter and take a pre and post ion reading before and after the GPS unit was installed. Right now we're doing the pre reading and pretty low ions here. We already have GPS installed in other parts of the building, so we're gonna have a little bit in this room. Um, but let's get our GPS unit installed and see what we have after. First thing you're gonna wanna do is pull this panel off here. Um, primarily where the controls and blower system is. So I have a drill to do this, but you can also do it with a nut driver, screwdriver, um, anything to take these nuts off. Want to set all your screws up top, that way you don't lose them. You're going to want to pull this panel off. Set the panel to the side. So now that we have the panel off of the unit, we're going to be checking voltage. Um, whenever we're installing a GPS unit, we like to have the GPS unit powered up 24-7. So that means whenever the fan is not running, the GPS unit will have power and will be producing ions in the cabinet. Whenever the fan comes on, you get that initial burst of ions. So what we're going to do here is take a multimeter and check the transformer, make sure we have 24 volts there. So we do have 25 volts that is acceptable for our GPS unit. And again, whenever remember the unit is powered up, we don't want to be putting our fingers in there, getting shocked. Alrighty, so now that we've verified voltage, we're ready to turn the unit off, depower it, and install the GPS unit. Over here, we're going to turn the unit off. We have a light switch that powers this unit. Kill that. And then we want to verify that we have no voltage so we don't shock ourselves. Turn our meter on. Go back up here to this transformer that we previously looked at. We have zero volts, so we are good to install our GPS unit. So now we're going to be installing our FC48 GPS unit. On the GPS unit, we have our windshield wipers that clean the brushes, talking about wires. We have our black wire. This is gonna be our multi-tap hot wire. So 24 volts, 120 volts, 240 volts. On this model, you do not have to select voltage. It sees it automatically and will change it. You have a white wire. White wire is your common. You also have a green wire. Green wire is your ground. You always wanna hook your ground up on a GPS unit. You also have two red wires right here that I've clipped off. These are so you can integrate it into a BAS system. They're just dry contacts. We won't be needing them here, so they're clipped off. No power goes to them, so it doesn't matter. We have two different mounting locations on the GPS unit. We have sides right here. You want to mount it like that to the blower. And then you also have these bottom mounts if you wanted to mount it like that. Um, today, for this application, we're going to be using the side mounts, not the bottom ones. So I've got my screw stuck through the magnet already, and I'm going to be mounting it right here. I'm going to put that in there, then I'm going to grab the nut. I'm going to put the nut on the screw. The magnet makes it tricky. There we go. Once we have the nut on the screw, as you can see here, we're going to take a Phillips head screwdriver. Sometimes you need a nut driver, sometimes you can just hold your finger on the nut. But you want to take a Phillips head screwdriver. Be careful because these magnets are very strong. And we want to tighten this up. You don't want to get it too tight, but you want to get it snug. So now, to check this one, make sure it's tight too, just to double check. Good and tight there. Let's put our screwdriver up here. Now that we have our magnets mounted, we are ready to mount our FC24 in our split system. We want our airflow going across this region right here. So across the needle point right there. So be careful mounting this. These magnets are very strong. It'll take it away from you. Mounted that, 
and we have the airstream going right across those bristles in there and one thing to note too is you want to have the bristles two inches away from anything metal so that means the edge of this blower assembly and that means the shaft in the center of the blower assembly you want to be two inches away from anything metal inside of here alrighty so now that the GPS unit is mounted we're ready to run our wires and connect power so as previously stated we have three wires here we have a hot a common and a ground you always want to look and find a chase to run the wires through sometimes you'll have a hole up through here um, this application we don't but we have a passage between the insulation right here so that's where we're going to run them so you want to pull back the insulation a little bit and feed them up there. Now that we have our wires ran through here, I'll we'll make sure the unit is off right now. And then we're going to take our wires. And for this step, you're going to need a wire stripper right here. And then a wire crimper right here. And you'll also need a wire crimp. So what we're going to do is take our strippers first, take our wire, and for these crimps, you only want about a quarter inch stripped off. So we'll strip that off right there. Twist our wires together. You always want to twist your wires together before you crimp. That'll make sure you get a good firm crimp. Take your crimp. Put it on your wire. Take your crimpers. After each crimp I do, I like to pull on the wire a little bit, make sure it's in there firmly and you got a good solid connection. These other wires I've already crimped, so we're good to go there. Next step here, we have these spade splitters. Spade splitters are very helpful installing GPS units because you can pull these taps off, and now you have two taps on, on one transformer. That's what we're gonna do here. So, as we verified earlier, this is our hot, this is our common. We're going to pull it off, put our splitter on there, put our factory wire back on, we're going to do the same with the common. Once you have the splitters installed, you're ready to install the GPS wires onto the splitters. So as previously stated, black is going to be your hot. Red is going to be the hot where we want to connect the black. That's our 24 volt source. So we want to stick our crimp on the splitter. And this is our common wire. And blue is going to be the common on this transformer. So we want to stick it on there. And you are good to go there. Now that we have our power and common hooked up, we're ready to hook our ground up. You want to hook the ground up to any part in here that is grounded as well. So on this unit, our back panel is grounded. So I found a spot back here. We're going to pull this screw out. While we're grounding this, we want to be careful not to knock any other wires loose in the unit. So you'll put your screw through there. This screw's hard to get to, that's why I'm starting it by hand. Got it started by hand, so we'll put the drill in there, tighten it up. Alrighty, now that we have our wires installed on our GPS unit, I like to go through and put zip ties on there, make sure none of our wires are rubbing anything, touching anything, and look neat. So now that we've got our GPS unit fully installed, we've checked our wires, they're not rubbing on anywhere, we've got them all tidied up, the wires up here are firmly connected, we're ready to turn power on to the unit and then to the GPS unit. 
So we've got power onto the unit now. Now we're ready to hit our switch. Whenever you hit this GPS switch, you should see a green power indicator pop up right here. We're gonna turn our switch on. There's our green light. So after we've installed our GPS unit, we've verified we have power to it and it's powered up. We have a green indicator light. I always like to hit the clean button on there. What does a clean button do? The windshield wipers that we talked about earlier, it cycles them. So you can hit that and it'll cycle the windshield wipers. I always like to hit that and verify everything is working properly within our GPS unit. So hit our button here. And I don't know if you can hear it or not, but you can hear the windshield wipers going back and forth on the GPS unit. So now that we have our GPS unit installed, we are verifying with an ion meter that it is properly working. We're looking for anything above 3,500 ions per cubic centimeter. On this ion meter, you can see we're bouncing between 20, 30, 40, and we're in the 200,000 range right here. So that means we have 200 to 300,000 ions per cubic centimeter. That means our GPS unit is working and we had a proper installation and you are good to go. All right, so uh, that's indoor air quality using bipolar ionization. Um, thanks GPS for providing this product and um, thanks to Braden for showing us how to install one. Great to be with you. Uh, it's not an easy subject to talk about because there's so many variables, but it's one that we, we love to talk about. If you have any questions, hit the comments and don't forget to hit that like and hit that subscribe. And we'll check us out next time on Mechanical Pros.